Hello, I am John. And I am Maggie. From The Avenue. In this Advent 2 reflection, what happens in the wilderness, you could say, not a lot. A wilderness conjures up in our minds of somewhere hot, dry and lifeless, where nothing goes on. We'll explore wildernesses and John the Baptist's role in preparing the way towards the light in the form of Jesus that was to come into the world. We have been inspired in our daily walks by what has been going on around us in our local countryside, where there are signs of the promise of new life to come. We have looked at two readings to guide us in this reflection, Isaiah chapter 40 and Mark chapter 1. And we are going to share the Mark reading with you now. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare the way a voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins they were baptised by him in the river Jordan. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Wilderness is what we don't have much of in the UK, do we? No, we don't. But there again, what is a wilderness? Well, is it no humans? No vegetation? No water? I think perhaps we have to step out of the biblical desert wilderness into a wilderness that we may have experienced ourselves. Yes. After all, God's world consists of very many different kinds of landscapes and some will feel physically uncomfortable to be in. Our experience may be wild mountain tops, boggy moors, a remote deserted beach, even a forest in the winter. There doesn't seem to be much living in these places. Or is there? On a mountain top, there will be some plants growing in cracks and sheltered places. A boggy moor may look desolate, but it still nurtures life in the form of specially adapted plants and much more. On a beach, you have to dig deep into the sand to find life. Thinking about our walks, even a wood in winter with its lifeless trees looks like a wilderness. There is certainly very little for us humans to eat or even drink. But there is abundant life if we look closely. Creation is going on. You're right. If you look at the branches of a tree carefully, you can already see the buds forming for next spring. Life is there. You just have to look or listen more carefully for it. There we are. God's creation is happening 
in a wilderness. Even now, preparations are being made for spring as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Nevertheless, why would you prepare a way for the Lord Jesus in a wilderness? I think the voice of John the Baptist in the wilderness would have been spread by word of mouth throughout the Jordan countryside. People had the faith to make what was an arduous journey. That's interesting. Many people actually came from Jerusalem, which is at least 50 miles from the River Jordan. To get there would have been two or three days walking for most. That certainly was a serious journey of faith. There was no, I'll just go along and see what's happening. Yes, the journey alone would have required preparation, food, drink and something to keep them warm at night. They will have had to do some or a lot of searching on the way. Really tough all round. Perhaps John was in a wilderness because it was such a leap of faith for people to make the trip with all the preparation that was needed for the journey and the time out from normal activities. In the end, they will have found where he was and after listening to his message, they must have felt they really needed to ask for forgiveness for all their misdeeds. And John marked this moment by baptising them. Going back to trees, John was that bud on what looks like a barren branch. A sign of new beginnings. A light illuminating the way in the wilderness, forecasting the great things to come. Even in a wilderness, a lot is happening. We'll now have a prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, our Father, as we prepare for your coming, help us stop, think of new beginnings, and thank you for this world, as even in the darkness there is light to come. Whether it is a slowly expanding bud on a branch, or the huge effort made to develop a coronavirus vaccine, we have so much to thank you for. The pandemic has been like a wilderness for many people who have become very lonely and fearful as a result of the need to isolate themselves because of age or health issues. Lord, reach out to them, their carers, friends and family, to help them through these testing times. We live in a complicated world where there is so much to drown out your voice. So help us, Lord, look for the signs of your love at work in all that is happening around us. Jesus, you are the light leading us on our way. And please forgive us when we sometimes forget to acknowledge this. We look forward to celebrate your coming amongst us, bringing us all out of our wilderness towards your light. Amen. Amen.